Hello, everyone. We're going to make iodine chloride today. Let's first do a mini scale testing. This test tube has a hole at the bottom, which can let the chlorine gas flow in and react with the iodine. Put the test tube in the chlorine gas and see what will happen. Iodine and chlorine react with a considerable rate at standard condition, and iodine chlorides are formed. Well, then let's scale it up. The ingredients are simple. Iodine, chlorine, which can be generated by using the reaction between hydrochloric acid and trichloroisocyanuric acid, aka TCCA. 64 grams of iodine was placed in a 100 ml conical flask with a condenser placed on the top. 23.9 grams of TCCA was placed in a 250 ml flask as the chlorine generator. Connected with a pressure equalized additional funnel, both flasks had magnetic stirring. Arbitrary amount of water was added to the funnel, then 54.5 grams of 21% hydrochloric acid was added. The purpose of diluting the hydrochloric acid was to achieve a better control of chlorine generation, and the magnetic stirring will also help. The chlorine that was coming off was moisturized, so I used two more connectors to create some space, and some glass fibers to hold the drying agent, and hydrous calcium chloride. The two pieces of glass were used here were 2924 and 2429 converters. Teflon tubes were used to transfer the chlorine gas. That condenser is used for buffer zone for chlorine gas to have enough time to react with iodine instead of me. Okay, everything is prepared and ready. Let's get started. Turn on the stirring and add the hydrochloric acid slowly. The drying agent works more efficiently when the flow rate of gas is slow. You can already see that the chlorine gas is reacting with the iodine vapor in the flask and the vapor color turned brown. According to the internet, the melting point of pure iodine monochloride is 27 degrees Celsius, but the mixture of iodine and iodine chloride has a lower melting point, even below 10 degrees Celsius, so that the reaction is not complete even after the mixture was fully liquefied. During the reaction, I moved the flask occasionally to, to let the solid iodine that was stuck to the wall to spread out in the mixture. The reaction is not so exothermic. Using a small flask and a low flow rate of chlorine, the temperature rose, but my hand can still barely touch the flask, which means our product stayed below its boiling point. Cooling water was not necessary here, but if you're using a bigger scale or faster flow rate of chlorine, it might be necessary to pass the water through the condenser. The temperature of the chlorine generator actually decreased. I turned on the help plate to kick away some of the chlorine dissolved in solution. Let's have a look at our drying agent. Some calcium chloride on the top looked yellowish. That was the color of iodine trichloride. Then we found out some calcium chloride partially liquefied, which was the evidence of water being absorbed. To purify the product, I attached an PAF in the middle. You can see a small amount of ICL3 came out first, and followed by mild chloride. I used a hot air gun to help the vapor travel to the condenser since the heat power received by the flask was relatively low. One thing I noticed was some iodine left in the flask, even though a small amount of ICL3 came out during the distillation, which means the chlorine should be in excess. But a certain amount of iodine was still left in the flask after distillation. My prediction for that is a small amount of ICL decomposed into its element and the chlorine from decomposition react with cold iodine monochloride vapor in the condenser to form yellow ICL3. In terms of storage, concerning the corrosive nature of our product, I decided to seal my ICL in an ampule. No leaks and safe to touch. Everyone is happy. Here's our iodine monochloride. 